if we take a look at our uh, our light frames I'm only going to do this for the luminance channel which would be the same as you would do for your DSLR or your one shot CCD so we have our folders set up ready to go calibration for when they're calibrated KLCC for calibrated cosmetically corrected files and then calibrated cosmetically corrected and registered registered would mean using a thing called star alignment which is in effect the stack so let's take a look at a light frame there we go one single light frame in the lumens so what we're going to do if we actually boost that so you can see the vignetting is quite apparent and you also you can see the dust here so what we're going to do we're going to calibrate these 12 frames with these to produce clean light frames so we go to image calibration we clear right and we add our light frames these are the original frames now our output directory I have to keep changing this because I've been messing around in different folders and files so it gives the defaults to where our last was so we just go to select so we have our master bias we have our master dark and now we have our master flat okay so we just run it we'll let this do its thing won't take too long and we're done so we're just going to minimize that and now if we actually have a look we had our original frame and if we open up our calibrated frame so that was the original let's boost it and this is the calibrated one As you can see the vignetting has gone there is a gradient in this image um, but that's again something we will get to in later on in the process but the main vignetting has been brought from the flat has been taken out the dust has been taken out uh, it's been bias removed and dark current moved so that's all good so now we go to image integration actually no we don't sorry we're going to cosmetically correct it and what this will do is a process where it helps to remove the hot and cold pixels where are you cosmetic correction here we go so we're going to add our frames which are our lights our luminance our calibrated ones then open them up oops I'll add our output directory will be calcc because they've been cosmetically corrected and we're going to use the master dark for this so we find the master dark file right now if we load up an image see if I can get this to do it finding a hot and cold pixel can sometimes be a bit of a pain where well, it is sometimes on this camera but let's <laughs> let's try and find one come on okay well, there's one straight away that one there so what I'm going to do is just create a preview of that so we can see it now I found ver that works very well and it's actually just using auto detect I keep the sigma the same on both if I just apply that to the preview oops sorry if I have the real time preview there we go so that was before the correction that's after the correction so it's removed whether that was a hot or cold pixel it's been removed it's good so we can delete the preview we can do actually close that all together because we don't need it I'm just gonna run it and it will just add that 
uh, cosmetic correction profile to all 12 of the light frames. And we're done. So we can now close that. So if we look at our files, we now have, we had our calibrated ones. We've now got our cosmetically corrected ones. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a process in integrate, in registration called star alignment. I'm just gonna use the, um, always remember to select the right one. Don't go back to your original files. Always remember to stay where you last were. So we've cosmetically corrected. So these are the files we need to work with. I'm just going to use frame one as a reference frame. Usually the best because it was straight from Prate Solve. So we're just going to go with that. Now we're going to do a thing called generate drizzle data. I will explain this in, in a moment when we can actually come to using it. So we're just going to select it, Cal CC. We're going to add all the files. We're going to select the output directory to Cal CC reg. You leave everything else as default and run it. This will now take all the 12 images and it will align them using stars for reference points which is what this is doing now. I've never had to change the uh, detection or matching settings. Some images I've, I've read you'd need to, you know, if, it's, um, if there's very few stars, not that generally there would be, but it depends what you're imaging, I guess. So default works wonders in a lot of the things in PixInsight. It's just that good a program. No, I don't work for them. <laughs> okay. So we just let this run, 10, 11, frame 12, and we do good. Okay, so now we have our calibrated files, we've cosmetically corrected them, we've used star align to align them, now we can integrate them. So what we're going to do now we're going to add the files from the reg folder. We're going to open that up. We're going to add the drizzle files that were generated during that. Oh, this is where I should have deleted more. Okay, we're just going to wing this and I'm just going to do what I did before. <laughs> Typical. Right, open the the file data see it changed because it has the drizzle attached now we're going to use additive now for the weighting if you haven't used uh, subframe selector then you can just use it as um, noise evaluation which is generally how I do things anyway we're going to generate drizzle data we want to evaluate the noise now for the rejections um, there's only 12 frames so 10 to 20 would be Windsorized which we'll keep. And for fluxes, we want to use scale and zero offset, which is going to stack them one on top of the other, thanks to the star alignment process. So we run. And when this is done, it will produce an image, which is the 12 light frames after all their corrections and calibrations stacked to produce one master file. So that will then be our master luminance, or it would actually, if you were using again, one shot color DSLR, that would be your final working image. So, and it's now just updating the drizzle information. So we're now integrated. So we can close that and we can take a look at this. Now, this is a high rejection and you can see there was something that came through the field of view of the camera could be meteor could be plain could be anything but it knows that it's not consistent in the frames 
so it's removed it and some of the other artifacts that it's removed as well uh, low rejection generally doesn't really contain a great deal and now we have our frame we just boost that slightly yeah we'll just keep it normally so that's 12 frames stacked together so if we actually just compare that to uh, oops, our original frame before anything was done to it a single frame you can see that there's a lot more detail in it um, there's now no vignetting there's still a slight gradient but again this is what we're going to get rid of later so that's it that is our fully calibrated master light frame but I'm going to get rid of it because <laughs> now we're going to use a thing called drizzle integration now what this does <laughs> uh, once again I should have done it we're just going to grab the file oh really grab the files the second set not the first one because they, they get updated so uh, okay so we've got them we're going to add them now what's this going to do it's going to be the same light frame but it's the drizzle integration now what it does is say your image is for argument's sake 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels the end result of drizzle integration the image will then be 4000 pixels by 4000 pixels and it uses um if you think of anyone who's au fait with computers uh, if you think of graphics and gaming anti-aliasing it kind of smooths the interpolation but interpolation into yeah between pixels to make the transitions smoother so even though the image is bigger it's actually a lot smoother so if we just run that we'll just let it do its thing I've been doing it on all of my images now um, it, I just find it yeah it just definitely looks cleaner uh, a bit more detail and it makes them quite zoomable as well you know you can sort of zoom in quite good on them and move around them and as you'll see later in this m31 shot so we'll just let this run okay so it's finished uh, weights rejection and now our final image if you notice is twice as big but we can look at it in its glory so you see it's quite uh, select it quite pan oh really <laughs> uh, what's going on here oh anyway I'll just do this the hard way you can see it's been blown up but it's kept some of the detail which is quite nice so this would now be we'll just rename the identifier to loom master thank you and then we'll save that as loom master so that is it for the calibration and stacking of the light frames I would now do this for the other three channels so we do it for the red the green and the blue if you're using DSR you would be now done so at this point we're now ready to start uh, integrating or oh, sorry stacking our four master frames well we're going to stack three initially the red green and blue to create an RGB file we're going to keep the luminance separate we're going to work on the luminance first get it to a state that we're happy with then work on the RGB then combine the two together to create an LRGB image and from there it's all plain sailing and just tweaks and bits and yeah until we're happy with the final image okay <laughs>